This shoe last maker tutorial covers morphing of shoemaking patterns from one shoe last to another. Morphing is a new capability in the latest version of shoe last maker. It allows for the mapping of geometries from one shoe last to another. This is a huge time saver as it means accessory designs only need to be created one time to be made available for any given shoe last. This morphing capability should work with all geometries in Rhino or even other software. So far though, I only have it set up to work with curves for shoemaking patterns, which is the topic of this tutorial. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to assume you already have shoemaking patterns designed. I'll do a future tutorial about how to do this in uh, Rhino 3D. Uh, so now that you have these here, uh, the next step is to put them on a layer called Morph. It has to be exactly spelt M-O-R-P-H. That's what's can be interpreted by the, the morphing algorithm. So I've actually already done that. So if you look in the uh, Layers panel here, you can see all the, um, the morphing curves disappear when I turn that layer off. And you want to make sure it's unlocked before you save this data. And this is going to be referred to as the source data. Um, it contains the this, uh, the curves that uh, that are form the source, and these are going to be mapped over to the target data essentially. So this is the source data. We'll save it like that. Uh, now, next you can uh, I'll open the target data, and you could build this uh, fresh by going to a new file and building it, or you could have already have the the shoe last saved somewhere like I have, and I I've called it uh, target. So now you have the target data. And we're going to be mapping the, the uh, shoemaking patterns on the source data from that source last to this target last. Uh, so now we're going to hit the Morph button. And here's where we can choose that source data. And there it is. And now there's a bunch of other options here. Uh, essentially, there's the uh, number of iterations the algorithm goes through. Uh, more is fast, uh, more is more accurate, but uh, it takes more time. And uh, similarly, you can increase the, the cage density. You'll see what I mean by cage momentarily here, which would uh, make it more accurate, but uh, slow it down. And same with the uh, essentially the density of the, cage, of the mesh that's going to be used for the morphing process. Uh, this is the edge length, so if you reduce it, it's going to be higher quality morph, but it's going to take more time. And then the final option here is pulling curves to the target last. It's a, a last step that uh, that if the morphing didn't completely bring the, the curves to the to the uh, target last, it's that one final step to pull them there. So I'm going to hit the morph button. And this algorithm does take a while. and We will get updates up in the command prompt. You can see that the target last, the source last is quite a bit larger than the target last was. And this first step is an affine or just scaling it down to the size of the source data, which it did. Now the morphing algorithm is beginning here. These first iterations that we specified 10, these are called point to point. It's essentially mapping, uh, dividing the curves for the uh, source data into points and then finding the corresponding ones on the target data and then moving the cage edit points uh, such that uh, they can become coincident. And so it goes through this uh, 10 iterations and you can see that the actual uh, data that we wanted to morph is being left behind at this point that will be brought over as a final step. So now we're finished with the point-to-point -point iterations. Now we're on uh, what's called mesh-to-mesh -mesh iterations. And that's essentially mapping the vertices of the source mesh to the target mesh. And now we're bringing along all of the, uh, the patterns, uh, pattern curves, the morphing data, essentially. And just about finished here. You can see in the command prompt, uh, it gets you, you have the updates throughout the process. So you can see how far you, along you are. It's a pretty fast computer I'm working on, so it could take longer on some older computers. So you can see that uh, now we are looking at the target last and the curves that have been mapped from the source last to this target last. And now the, as you can see, it does a pretty good job. Uh, some of the curves uh, have some slight issues 
And this is, uh, so it does some post-processing is going to be required. Hopefully uh, more of this post-processing will be automated in the future and the morphing process will be improved such that it's not even needed that much. But for now, I'll, uh, I'll just go through a few commands you'll want to use to, to clean up this data. So first of all, you look at this curve and it's got a really high control point count, as you can see, and it's got a bit jagged. So the first step I'd suggest is to rebuild that curve and you could do this with all the curves simultaneously not doing them one by one but just to keep uh, keep things simple here I'm just going to do them one at a time I'm thinking maybe about uh, 30 control points would be pretty good and now you might want to uh, smooth it out using the, the fair command do that a few times and now you want to do that with the, the same thing with the curve next to it. Rebuild it down to 30, ferret. And so now you're gonna to have to pull it back to the surface. And you can see that's uh, fixed it up quite a bit. So of course, when you pull it back to the surface, the control point count increases, but it's a much more reasonable control point count now, and the, the curves are a lot smoother. You also see some of the eyelets here got out of position a little bit. You're going to have to reposition those. Uh, but like I said, future versions of this morphing algorithm will hopefully be even more accurate and take care of a lot of this uh, post-processing. And then, so once you've cleaned up all these curves, the next step in your workflow is likely to to flatten your patterns, and that's something I'll be uh, covering in my, my next tutorial. And at some point, I'll start working to make this morphing algorithm work for not just curves, but also other geometries, uh, such as bringing over soul, entire soul geometries from one shoe last to another, and uh, other things like that. So as you can see, there's a lot of potential for speeding up and uh, reducing design time uh, using this process. So if you've uh, enjoyed this video, found it helpful, please subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.